Section 3, Emergency Procedures. Definitions. Land immediately. Land on the nearest clear area where a safe normal landing can be performed. Be prepared to enter auto rotation during approach if required. Land as soon as practical. Landing site is at pilot's discretion based on nature of problem and available landing areas. Flight beyond nearest airport is not recommended. Power failure, general. A power failure may be caused either by an engine or drive system failure and will usually be indicated by the low RPM horn. An engine failure may be indicated by a change in noise level, nose left yaw, an oil pressure light, or decreasing engine RPM. A drive system failure may be indicated by an unusual noise or vibration, nose right or left yaw, or decreasing rotor RPM, while engine RPM is increasing. In case of power failure, immediately lower collective to enter auto rotation and reduce airspeed to power off, velocity never exceed or below. Caution. Aft cyclic is required when collective is lowered at high speed. Do not apply aft cyclic during touchdown or ground slide to prevent possible blade strike to tail cone. Power, power failure above 500 feet AGL. 1. Lower collective immediately to maintain rotor RPM. 2. Establish a steady glide at approximately 70 knots. 3. Adjust collective to keep RPM between 97 and 108% RPM or apply full down collective if lightweight prevents attaining above 97%. Four, select a landing spot, and if altitude permits, maneuver so landing will be into wind. Five, a restart may be attempted at pilot's discretion if sufficient time is available. Six, if unable to restart, turn unnecessary switches and fuel valve off. Seven, at about 40 feet above ground level, Begin cyclic flare to reduce rate of descent and forward speed. 8. At about 8 feet above ground level, apply forward cyclic to level ship and raise collective just before touchdown to cushion landing. Touchdown in level attitude with no straight ahead. Power failure between 8 feet and 500 feet above ground level. 1. Lower collective immediately to maintain rotor RPM. 2. Adjust collective to keep RPM between 97 and 108%, or apply full down collective if lightweight prevents attaining above 97%. 3. Maintain airspeed until ground is approached, then begin cyclic flare to reduce rate of descent and forward speed. 4. At about 8 feet above ground level, apply forward cyclic to level ship and raise collective just before touchdown to cushion landing. Touchdown in level attitude with no straight ahead. Power failure below 8 feet above ground level. 1. Apply right pedal as required to prevent yawing. 2. Allow helicopter to settle. 3. Raise collective just before touchdown to cushion landing. Maximum glide distance configuration. 1. Airspeed approximately 90 knots. 2. Rotor RPM approximately 90%. Best glide ratio is about 4.7 to 1, or 1 nautical mile per 1,300 feet above ground level. Minimum rate of descent configuration. 1. Airspeed approximately 55 knots. 2. Rotor RPM approximately 90%. Minimum rate of descent is about 1,350 feet per minute. Glide ratio is about 4 to 1, or 1 nautical mile per 1,500 feet above ground level. Caution, increase rotor RPM to 97% minimum or full down collective when auto rotating below 500 feet above ground level. Air restart procedure. Caution, do not attempt restart if engine malfunction is suspected or before safe auto rotation is established. One, mixture full rich. Two, throttle closed then crack slightly. Three, actuate starter with left hand. Emergency water landing power off. One, follow same procedure as for power failure over land until contacting water. 
If time permits, unlatch doors prior to water contact. Two, apply lateral cyclic when aircraft contacts water to stop rotors. Three, release seat belt and quickly clear aircraft when rotors stop. Emergency water landing, power on. One, descend to hover above water. Two, unlatch doors. Three, passengers exit aircraft. Four, fly to safe distance from passengers to avoid possible injury by rotors. Five, switch battery and alternator off. Six, roll throttle off and over travel spring. Seven, keep aircraft level and apply full collective as aircraft contacts water. Eight, apply lateral cyclic to stop rotors. Nine, release seat belt and quickly clear aircraft when rotors stop. Loss of tail rotor thrust in forward flight. Failure is usually indicated by nose right yaw, which cannot be corrected by applying left pedal. One, immediately enter auto rotation. Two, maintain at least 70 knots if practical. Three, select landing site, roll throttle off and over travel spring and perform auto rotation landing. Note, when a suitable landing site is not available, the vertical stabilizers may permit limited controlled flight at low power settings and air speeds above 70 knots. However, prior to, prior to reducing airspeed, enter full auto rotation. Loss of tail rotor thrust and hover. Failure is usually indicated by nose right yaw, which cannot be stopped by applying left pedal. One, immediately roll throttle off and over travel spring and allow aircraft to settle. Two, raise collective just before touchdown to cushion landing. Headset audio failure. If headset audio fails, land as soon as practical. Caution. For aircraft which provide low RPM horn through the auto audio system, pilot will not hear horn with a failed headset. Engine fire during start on ground. One, cranking. Continue and attempt to start, which could suck flames and excess fuel into engine. Two, if engine starts, run at 60 to 70% RPM for a short time. Three, fuel mixture off. 4. Fuel valve off. 5. Battery switch off. 6. If time permits, apply rotor brake to stop rotors. 7. Exit helicopter. Engine fire in flight. 1. Enter auto rotation. 2. Cabin heat off if time permits. 3. Cabin vent on if time permits. 4. If engine is running, perform normal landing then pull fuel mixture off and shut fuel valve off. If engine stops running, shut fuel valve off and complete auto rotation landing. Five, battery switch off. Six, if time permits, apply rotor brake to stop rotors. Seven, exit helicopter. Electrical fire in flight. One, battery and alternator switches off. Two, open cabin vents. Three, land immediately. Four, pull fuel mixture off and shut fuel valve off. Five, if time permits, apply rotor brake to stop rotors. Six, exit helicopter. Note, low RPM warning system and governor are inoperative with battery and alternator switches both off. Tachometer failure. If rotor or engine tack malfunctions in flight, use remaining TAC to monitor RPM. If it is not clear which TAC is malfunctioning, or if both TACs malfunction, allow governor to control RPM and land as soon as practical. Note, each TAC, the governor, and the low RPM horn are on separate power circuits. A special circuit allows the battery to supply power to the TACs with the battery and alternator switches both off. Hydraulic system failure. Hydraulic system failure is indicated by a heavy or stiff cyclic and collective controls. Loss of hydraulic fluid may cause intermittent and or vibrating feedback in the controls. Control will be normal except for the increase in stick forces. One, hydraulic switch, verify on. Two, 
If hydraulics not restored, hydraulic switch off. Three, adjust airspeed and flight condition as desired for comfortable control. Four, land as soon as practical. Governor failure. If engine RPM governor malfunctions, grip throttle firmly to override the governor, then switch governor off. Complete flight using manual throttle control. Warning, caution lights. Note, if a light causes excessive glare at night, bulb may be unscrewed or circuit breaker pulled to eliminate glare during landing. Oil, indicates loss of engine power oil or oil pressure. Check engine tack for power loss. Check oil pressure gauge, and if pressure loss is confirmed, land immediately. Continued operation without oil pressure will cause serious engine damage and engine failure may occur. Engine fire indicates possible fire in engine compartment. Main rotor temp indicates excessive temperature of main rotor gearbox. Main rotor chip indicates metallic particles in main rotor gearbox. Tail rotor chip indicates metallic particles in tail rotor gearbox. Note, if a light is accompanied by any indication of a problem such as noise, vibration, or temperature rise, land immediately. If there is no other indication of a problem, land as soon as practical. Break-in fuzz will occasionally activate chip lights. If no metal chips or slivers are found on detector plug, clean and reinstall. Tail gearbox must be refilled with new oil. Hover for at least 30 minutes. If chip light comes on again, replace gearbox before further flight. Low fuel indicates approximately three gallons of usable fuel remaining. The engine will run out of fuel after 10 minutes at cruise power. Caution, do not use fuel. Do not use low fuel caution light as a working indication of fuel quantity. Clutch, indicates clutch actuator circuit is on either engaging or disengaging clutch. When switch is in the engage position, light stays on until belts are properly tensioned. Never take off before light goes out. Note, clutch light may come on momentarily during run up or during flight to retension belts as they warm up and stretch slightly. This is normal. If however, the light flickers or comes on in flight and does not go out within 10 seconds, pull clutch circuit breaker, and land as soon as practical. Reduce power and land immediately if there are other indications of drive system failure. Be prepared to enter auto rotation. Have drive system inspected for a possible malfunction. Alternator. Indicates low voltage and possible alternator failure. Turn off non-essential electrical equipment and switch alternator off and then back on after one second to reset alternator control unit. If light stays on, land as soon as practical. Continued flight without functioning alternator can result in loss of power to tachometers, producing a hazardous flight condition. Starter on indicates starter motor is engaged. If light does not go out when ignition switch is released from start position, immediately pull mixture off and turn battery switch off. Have starter motor serviced. Low RPM indicates rotor speeds below 97% RPM. To restore RPM, immediately lower collective, roll throttle on, and in forward flight, apply aft cyclic. Light is disabled when collective is full down. Governor off indicates engine RPM. Governor is switched off. Carbon monoxide indicates elevated levels of carbon monoxide in cabin. Shut off heater and open nose and door vents. If hovering, land or transition to forward flight. If some symptoms of CO poisoning, headache, drowsiness, dizziness accompany light, land immediately. Brake indicates rotor brake is engaged. Release immediately in flight or before starting engine. Full throttle if installed. Indicates engine near full throttle. The governor will be ineffective because it cannot increase throttle to maintain RPM. Lower collective as required to extinguish light. Hydraulic, if installed. Indicates hydraulic system is switched off. 
audio alerts, low RPM horn. Horn is provided by speakers in the side of the instrument console on earlier aircraft or through the audio system on later aircraft. The horn activates simultaneously with the low RPM caution light and indicates rotor speed below 97% RPM. To restore RPM, lower collective, roll throttle on, and in forward flight, apply aft cyclic. Horn and light are disabled when collective is full down. High RPM warble. On later aircraft, a warble, high low tone, in the audio system indicates a rotor speed is approaching the 108% RPM limit. Race collective is required to control RPM.